The fly I'm tying for you today is my damselfly nymph pattern. You're probably familiar seeing these buzz around your favorite ponds and lakes, and they're almost always blue when they're adults. But as nymphs, they can be tan, brown, olive, and a variety of different colors. I tend to only tie them in two colors, and that's tan and olive. So first off, to make the tail, they have long wispy tails. I'm going to pull off six or seven pieces of marabou, get them all about to the length evenly, and break them off. You don't want to cut them and make them square, but you like them to be all the same length, and you want the length about the same as the fly body. So we're going to take that, transfer it over here, wrap over it to the end of the straight shank of the hook, and the rest of it we can carefully, without clipping our thread, get rid of. Then just wrap over that to secure it down. And this is a nymph, so any extra materials aren't going to be a problem. There's our nice wispy tails for the damselfly nymph. The rib for the back half of this fly is going to be maxima, four pound in the brown or chameleon. We'll tie this in right where the tail is tied in, the end of the tail there, wrap back. That can be just set aside for later. Now we're going to tie in marabou for the body. And to do the body, you want a really nice blood quill that has long fibers on it. We're taking pull off a dozen or so of those fibers and kind of get them all together. And now we're going to go out here to the end and we're going to again break them off to kind of get them evened up. The reason you want these even is because this is going to form the back half of your body for the fly. So we'll get those evened up, start and wrap over them, secure them in well. There's always going to be one or two that get away from you. That's okay. We've put enough in there that we're going to have material to make the bo body of the fly. And we're going to go up about two thirds and make sure we have a thread base and that's the thread aside. Now these are going to get twisted. You can use hackle pliers on these if you need to because they sometimes get away from you. And we're just going to start and we're going to wrap these. And because they have fibers sticking out from them, as we go forward, it's going to look more and more like the gills on the back half of the body of the damsel nymph. Once we're up about two thirds of the way, we're going to cross over there, tie those off. And if I leave them in the hackle pliers and make my cut, I'm going to get rid of all of them at once, like that. And we can just take the rest of them out of the hackle pliers for what we need next. Make sure that's good and secure. Now we're going to take the four pound maxima and we're going to do a reverse rib. We're going to go the opposite direction that we wrapped the marabou fiber on with and space those out nicely. Part of the reason for this is they have a segmented body, but also for a fly fisherman, if you don't wrap something over those marabou fibers, that form the back half of the body. The first fish that eats that fly will chew it up and it'll be almost worthless. So that does two things by tying in the maxima is it creates segments but also makes that body a lot tougher. For the very prominent wing case on a damselfly nymph, we're going to use a tail from a pheasant. This is just a center tail. And we're gonna pull off a cluster the fibers from the tail. We're going to turn them around because we want these to go the small part tight in first and to get bigger as we go toward the front of the fly. Just the natural shape of the pheasant or of the uh, damselfly. So we're going to help make this all work by tying those in tip first and then when we pull them forward it will get larger as they go forward. To make the legs on the damsel nymph we're going to pull out a small amount of thread and make a little dubbing loop. And if you need instructions on how to use a dubbing loop, just see my video on YouTube on dubbing loops. Work our way up to the front with the thread and kind of set it out to the side. Now the legs on a damsel nymph are very active when they're swimming around, so we're going to use more marabou, the tan, same as the body, and I pull off a cluster from the quill, the blood quill, 
And again, I'm going to go out and I want to get these all fairly even in the front. I'm just going to break them off. These are going to form the legs. So the legs on the damsel nymph should be about the same length as the body. So we're going to measure like that. And where my fingers are up here in front, I'm going to change hands. And I'm going to cut those off. Because we don't want those in the fly. Now, this is a technique that was showed to me years ago by a friend named Chris Mallory that lives in Southern California. This is what he calls a Christmas tree. And we're going to take the legs, we're going to put just the last part of them in the dubbing loop, spread them out, once they're spread I'm going to twist them and I'm going to make the Christmas tree. Grab them with our hackle pliers so they don't get away from us. And I'm going to start and go around and you don't have to get these wraps really close together. You want to space them out and every time you go around you pull the legs back. You don't want to get them caught under the next wrap. You don't need many legs. They only have a few on each side. So we get to the front. We're going to go ahead and tie that off. And a little trick I use is hold this back and to just use your bobbin and go behind your hackle pliers. If you have enough thread out, you can go behind them and clear them and wrap it off really well while your other hand is doing something other than holding your bobbin out of or your hackle pliers out of the way. Cut that off, make sure they're all tied back. Now we're going to take and go to the top and we're going to pull them apart. Try to get them separated to the sides they should be on for legs. And once those are separated out, I'm going to take my pheasant and pull it over and make a wing case. Wrap it down securely. And this gives us our legs out the side, but we don't want to cut that off yet. Next are the eyes, which are very prominent on a damselfly nymph. So today I'm going to use copper bead eyes that I made. And you can see my video on making eyes with monofilament on YouTube to learn how to do these. I like to hold the eyes on and make some wraps over them in one direction. And go this way first. And then that allows you to simply pull them back with your finger and go between your finger and the eye on the other side. I'll show you how that looks. I'm just pulling them back this way and making this wrap the second time. So I've made wraps this way to start this way to finish and then I want to stop behind the eyes because I'm going to take this material like I did on my damselfly or dragonfly nymph, pull it back and wrap over it to form the head between the eyes. Then I'm simply going to take my scissors and go into these pheasant fibers here. I don't want to cut off any legs and I'm going to clip them off to form the wing case. Now damsels, the legs on them, are, they're very flat body-wise. They should be not much profile this way, but a lot of profile this way. So any legs that are sticking on the bottom, you can get rid of to help that profile be slim. A couple half hitches. Clip the thread and a little bit of cement right behind the eyes to get the thread so it doesn't stretch and pull out. Now, it's just a matter of if the legs are the equal length on both sides, they're fine. If not, you can go and you can break them off a little bit, even them out, and give yourself that nice narrow profile that a damselfly nymph should have from the side. That's the Mahulka damselfly nymph.